Can we play the sound, please, of Kim Mulkey? And I just cannot wait for whatever it is this Washington report, Washington Post report is, because uh, among other things, she's complaining that the reporter who's been trying to reach her for two years to do this didn't give her enough time to respond. <laughs> <laughs> Like two years <laughs> has been trying to get an interview with Mulkey. And Mulkey, you know, uh, Brittany Griner said, among other things, that uh, Mulkey, uh, you know, tried to get her to repress her sexuality publicly. And Kim Mulkey seems pretty terrible. And the reason, you know, she's in big trouble here isn't the voice. It's because she didn't wear one of those ridiculous outfits this time to this <laughs> press conference where she's got a two-minute response to a Washington Post story that she's alerting us all to, doing great publicity for the oh, Washington Post because the we all want to see what this story is going to say. This reporter has been working on a story about me for two years. After two years of trying to get me to sit with him for an interview, he contacts LSU on Tuesday as we were getting ready for the first round game of this tournament with more than a dozen questions, demanding a response by Thursday, right before we're scheduled to tip off. Are you kidding me? This was a ridiculous deadline that LSU and I could not possibly meet, and the reporter knew it. It was just an attempt to prevent me from commenting and an attempt to distract us from this tournament. It ain't gonna work, buddy. Unfortunately, this is part of a pattern that goes back years. I told this reporter two years ago that I didn't appreciate the hit job he wrote on Brian Kelly. And that's why I wasn't going to do an interview with him. After that, the reporter called two former college coaches of mine and left multiple messages that he was with me in Baton Rouge to get them to call him back. Trying to trick these coaches into believing that I was working with the Washington Post on a story. But you see, reporters who give a megaphone to a one-sided embellished version of things aren't trying to tell the truth. They're trying to sell newspapers and feed the click machine. This is exactly why people don't trust journalists and the media anymore. It's these kinds of sleazy tactics and hatchet jobs that people are just tired of. I'm fed up. I've hired the best defamation law firm in the country. And I will sue the Washington Post if they publish a false story about me. Juju, put it on the poll, please. Does Kim Mulkey sound like Marlboro Reds? Uh, the click machine, what does that look like? The click machine. I know it very well. <laughs> it's, That's why I was asking. Yeah, it's a, it's amorphous. You know, it's it's more of a just a an invisible dinosaur that's out there and gnarling and growling and threatening. But that woman is terrified of the truth. Oh. She is terrified of what he's about to write because she knows it's going to be truthful. Uh, I want to circle back for a second to this Kim Mulkey story because I remember actually a conversation with a journalist friend of mine had to be close to 20 years ago where uh, I was explaining to him that the things that he and I care about are dying or dead in journalism, that people don't care about the stuff that goes into how a Kim Mulkey story gets reported. So I will tell you, because I'm guessing that most people listening to this, when Kim Mulkey comes out and says they gave me till Thursday to respond and sent me the questions on Tuesday, the, the big stuff gets lawyered. The, the big stuff where you have to make accusations that are dangerous because a Kim Mulkey might sue you, that's not something that's done hour to hour, even day to day. You have this... If they were trying to get her for two years and have finally nailed stuff down and are saying you have two days to respond, 
it's because they've gone through a vigorous amount of vetting on the questions that they have and how they're going to ask them. Now, I understand that Kim Mulkey is presenting to the audience the viewpoint of hit piece, somebody just write something. And what happens when journalism is aspiring to do something that is fair, that is objective, that is fact-based, and it gets torn apart by both skepticism that exists before you even arrive at the story, but someone who can then go with the megaphone to the ignorant. And I'm not calling the supporters of Mulkey or Trump here ignorant, but I am saying where people yell fake news to undercut this. On one side, the reason this isn't a fair fight is because you've got somebody aspiring to objectivity and fairness, and the other person's just fighting with brass knuckles and doesn't care and can yell to the screaming crowd, see fake news here, they're not... So one, time, one side is trying to fight fair and the other side undermines it by not caring about fighting fair, by just shouting to everyone, this is wrong, it's just a hit piece, it, as if someone's just sitting down at a computer and typing something up that day to get Kim Mulkey. These things are thoroughly reported. Billy made fun of, was this person working on anything else for two years? Oftentimes not. There are fewer and fewer papers that can do the kind of work like that. That kind of work loses to fake news and somebody just shouting to create the unrest around America's general distrust of the news. And it's really sad to see because journalism can't win that fight. Like, this story will be fair and vetted. And when it comes out, you can rest assured she will not be able to sue them. She will threaten to sue them. She will make a lot of noise around suing them. But I assure you that the best lawyers in journalism for the Washington Post will make it so that that story is unassailable ethically and legally, and that it takes a great deal of care to get it in that position. And I just find it debilitating that someone like Kim Mulkey can undercut that with writing down some words on a piece of paper for, for you know, when, sh when she's done an hour's worth of work on rebuttal and two years' worth of work have been done on talking to reluctant people and, and, and finding people who are scared to talk and making sure that anonymous sources can be supported by multiple sources that aren't anonymous so that anything that is put in front of a lawyer can make sure that it passes the muster of a courtroom because if you do Kim Mulkey wrong here after the noise, she will have a lot of your money and you will have a giant problem. These things are not done carelessly. The responses, though, that undercut them are allowed to be done carelessly and often win because people just don't care how meticulous journalists have to be about writing something like this that Kim Mulkey is afraid of and should be afraid of. Especially the history of this particular publication, which took down a sitting president. Like the Washington Post, yeah. I think they know what they're doing. Well, and, well, and, I, and, and churches throughout the land, a number of different entities. At, at, like this, there are only a couple of newspapers that can do it this way anymore. Only a couple, maybe just two. Yeah, well, I, that's another aspect of the story is that, uh, you know, who owns the Washington Post? Jeff Bezos went into it and everyone had this concern like, oh, they're going to get away from um, investigative journalism. And to be fair, we also don't know what stories, if any, the uh, the Bezos ownership has and that conflict has presented itself because if it doesn't get out, then it doesn't get out and we're none the wiser. But they have really prioritized investigative journalism in ways that no one else in this nation has. But the reason why Kim Mulkey did that and said this is why people don't trust uh, media and journalists, that is, if we could identify her saying that is exactly why, because that is a page out of the playbook. You just deny and you discredit the media as a whole because as a singular amorphous entity, it's already a super divisive thing. And oftentimes they will threaten litigation. Sometimes they will even go through with the litigation. And it doesn't matter what happens after that, as we've seen. Uh, Dave Portnoy, he threatened lawsuits uh, citing defamation. The case gets thrown out. You don't really hear about it anymore person that feels wrong still gets to maintain their innocence and you don't care about the result it's how donald trump gets to try all these court cases lose and continues pushing on with the big lie that the election was stolen from him it doesn't actually matter 
the result. All that matters is you appear like you have been wronged, and the people that have already made up their mind about the media will follow you. Kim Mulkey is on the offensive here with angry bravado, and behind that, it's pretty clear that you hear the desperation. Uh, She's scared that whatever the truth is, is going to come out, and it's going to be backed up by two years of reporting and vetting by some of the best journalism lawyers, like you mentioned. She's scared right now, and so she's going on the offensive. Do you guys understand what I'm saying, though, when we've seen over the last few years, right, that some of these arguments feel super dishonest because uh, we are arguing about things that are supposed to be facts, and the facts don't end up mattering. But if you compound that by making this fight about... One side has to do it rigorously and ethically, and the other side is backed by a country that doesn't believe that those things need to be done rigorously and ethically. You get into a problem where the careful lose every fight to the careless because the weights are tilted in this. You can't you can't win a fight if you have to follow all the rules and someone else is allowed to bite you. Didn't a UFC fighter get thrown out yeah. of the sport yeah. this weekend because he bit somebody? It's like w- It's why that's probably the move these days. I, I think coming out in front of it and, and already just casting this scrutiny over a, a piece that you haven't seen yet is not something that oh, we often see. Oh, but she saw the see. question. She saw the question. Oh, yeah. Oh, she no, saw, no, no, no but, doubt. But, but, that, no, but no, that's but why going public. She knows, what's, she knows what's coming. Yeah, but that's why going public. Well, she, she knows of some of the things, especially she can probably deduce that by who they're talking to and some of the questions that she's fielded. I don't think that she knows every aspect of this, but what she did, I think – is in today's day and age the right move? I, 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 one of the words she used that really interested me was embellishment. Okay, when you accuse somebody of anticipated embellishment, what you're saying is there is truth there, but he's exaggerating it. I think she knows that some bad truth about her is going to come out. So she's taking the offensive to use words like embellish. And already put in her spin, which is the people that they're talking to that actually cooperated with this and didn't rebuff those advances. She framed them as people that already have access to grind. So you add that other dash of skepticism and what you're coming out to see. And when, when the story does inevitably drop and Kim Mulkey, I think that's a big fat mission accomplished for her. And she's giving the Washington post the best possible publicity by going on the offensive with this. Not the best possible. Better would have been if she had dressed the way she normally does <laughs> with two uh, ducks on her Or if her she said, it's all true, true what they wrote. Yeah. That would give pretty good pl- publicity. Read the actual story. Can you let me finish the duck joke before? The no. I had, I had, reset it, reset it. No, it's going to land. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Yeah. No, like she it would have been ducks. better. If, no, I, I, I mean, thought it was butterflies. I'm not joking. Uh, no, two actual ducks, mallards, on her, oh. <laughs> on her shoulders. I mean, that was a good right, joke. That's, that's a good joke. But in fairness, though, I mean, that sounds like embellishment. And we're here talking about not embellishing things, Dan. I mean, you're not doing service to this argument. I would have been. Is it embellishment? Service. Would you be totally surprised if if she had a couple of geese on her shoulders no. when she appeared the next? A time? geese or duck, which is it? I'll go. I've ended the last two segments screaming. <laughs>